In this video we will add a realistic mud effect to a whole car. For this we will use a very simple procedural workflow that requires no additional preparations and allows maximum adjustability as everything stays fully parametric. So in this video we will add a procedural mud and dust effect on this quite complex model that has a lot of different parts and a lot of different shaders. You can achieve this kind of result in just a matter of minutes without having to prepare any kind of UVs or something like this. And as usual you can always find all of my scene files on my Patreon if you want to try it out by yourself. But now without any further ado let's just jump right into our software and see how it's done. So let's first quickly check out our starting point and that would be this scene in here. You can see it's rather simple. I just have this nice model here of a pickup truck and then I just built some very basic lighting and shading setup which we're not going to discuss in this video because I've done very similar setups in many of my other tutorials. So if you want to check those out, please check out my channel. And now the only important thing is that here this pickup truck uses basically one multi sub object material so that means we have one shader that has different kind of ids here and in those different ids there's different kind of sub materials and then they are applied here to this model and this is kind of the requirement for this workflow here to work because we need to layer our dust and our mud effects on top of all of those shaders in here so here i switch to the slate material editor now at the moment we have this multi sub object material here applied to our pickup truck. I have a bunch of other materials here prepared already. This dummy material, which we're gonna use later on. And then also these two materials here, one for dust. So this is just this kind of brownish dust color in here. And then we also have a mud material. It has a little bit more details and variation compared to the dust material. And those two materials, we're gonna blend together here with our multi sub object material. So here we have our multi sub object material. You can see there's quite a bunch of different materials here inside and I basically hide it all of this kind of layer tree in here so that we just can focus here on our materials. And now we're gonna use all of those different shaders here and put them into a V-Ray blend material. So we will put here this multi sub object material as our base material and then also apply here our material to our pickup truck. Now nothing happens of course because we need to then layer here our different dust and mud effects on top of it. So for this let's move this here out of the way. Let's add a new V-Ray dirt node in here and then we will go back into our blend material and let's first assign here this dust shader as the code 1. You can see now once we do this like the whole car is covered here 50% with this dust material and that's quite remarkable because it's doing that for all of the different sub materials in here so i think that's really quite a powerful way that you can add basically a new layer on top of a bunch of different shaders in here but instead of just blending this here with this numeric value let's put this here to black so that we don't have any of this effect here of our code material let's connect our v-ray dirt here into the blend amount and then let's see what the result will be for this one in here. So now we're using the V-Ray Dirt to blend these different shaders together. You can see we have some of this red car paint here showing through, but we have to invert our mass in order to get the kind of result which we want, that we have this kind of dust here collecting in these kind of like creases and crevices. And for now, let's also not use the sub object material because it will make it a bit harder to see what's actually going on. Let's replace this here with this dummy shader. And now we can better see where we are adding this kind of dust in here. So first let's make this effect here a little bit more obvious by just adding a V-Ray color into this occluded color in here. And then the default value is gray. Let's change that here to a value of white so that we are back of where we were before. But now we have additional option here to add a different multiplier. For example, I can use a very strong multiplier like 10, for example. And then you can see a very obvious effect of this dust, which is collecting here on the vehicle. Then also we can go in here and for example, play with the different options in here, the radius, for example. And now you can see that the dust here is accumulating in a bigger area. 
We also see another problem and that is that those wheels here, since they are placed on our ground plane, they also are affected by this ground plane. So the ambient occlusion thinks that here these parts should also be masked out. And in this case for the dust, that's not really what I want. So I will just change here this option to consider same object only. If I do this, then only the pickup truck is considered here for the ambient occlusion itself. You can see that now those wheels here are not affected by the ground anymore. And I think like this, we should get a much better effect. Let's also rearrange this here a little bit. And let's go back into here and play with the radius, for example, a radius of 100 centimeters. And then for the multiplier, I will just use a value of three for now. So now I feel I still want to boost this effect a little bit. And this we can do with the distribution. So by default, that's set to a value of one. We can go to a value of zero, for example, or even a value of negative one or even higher values. I think for this case here, I will settle for this value in here. And then I will play a little bit with the radius. So at the moment, we just use this numeric value, but you can also use a V-Ray bitmap and then just load here this texture map, for example. And then let's put this into the radius. Once we do this, you can see that now we have a texture map which is affecting this kind of result in here. The problem is some of our parts here, they don't really have a UV coordinate. So for this, we will add a V-Ray triplanar texture in here. And let's just connect this into this mapping source. And then in the triplanar texture, let's use a value of 100, for example. You can see now we have this kind of like more random effect that's happening here. We can also use a random offset and also a random rotation so that we don't have these kind of repetitive patterns. You can see now we are kind of nicely breaking up here our dust effects. So in order to not have this transition here so abrupt, we can play with the blend amount, for example. Let's decrease that a little bit. And you can see that now we are mixing here this radius a little bit more with our texture map. And I think like this, or maybe 85, we can get like a much nicer distribution here where we don't have this very smooth transitions, but there's a little bit of details here where this dust basically accumulated. And I think like this, the result for now looks already quite good. So now I just renamed and reorganized the stuff that we built just now. And now we can also exchange here our base material, the dummy material with our pickup truck and then see what kind of result we will get. So you can see we have now this nice effect here where this dust is laying over here our pickup truck. But there's some problems and this we're gonna figure out in the next step. So for this, I changed the camera view a bit so that we can see better what's going on. And as you can see here in, for example, the headlights, or also the interior of the car, it looks really weird because we have all of this kind of dust accumulating in the inside of those parts in here. And that's of course not really what we want because even if this truck is driving basically in a very dusty environment, we would just have dust on the outside, but not here on the inside of our vehicle. So luckily in this case, it's very easy to fix because we will just need to deal with our refractions. And for this, we can use a V-Ray override materials. Let's just add this into the scene and then let's add the dirty version of our pickup truck into the base materials. Let's use the output and put this here into the base material and then also assign our override material to our pickup truck again. And of course, for now, nothing happens because we just used here the dirty version of this shader here as the base material. But what we can do now is that we use the clean version of the shader, this one that doesn't have any kind of dirt effects applied to it, here as the refract material. Once you do this, you can see it's already improving a little bit, but what we also need to do is to use the same shader here in the reflect material, because in here there's a lot of reflections and those also shouldn't be dirtied up and now you can see basically that we can see the interior of our car. It doesn't have any kind of dirt here on the interior. And we also have here the headlights very clean, but on the surface, we still have this kind of dust effects in here. 
but our refractions here stay clean. There's no dirt effects applied on them. And that's quite powerful to use this kind of V-Ray override material in this case. So now I tidied everything up again and I also switched back to the original camera view. And now you can see we have a nice dusty effect here on our vehicle, but we don't really have the feeling like there's some very thick mud and that's what we're gonna change now. So let's first disable here our dust temporarily by just putting this value here to a value of zero. Then the dust here disappears and we can also exchange our base material here with this dummy shader so that we can see better what we're doing. So now we will add our mud shader to this second slot. And then once we do this, you will see that there is this effect of a 50% blend here. And let's just disable this for now. Let's put this all the way to black. And then the same like before, let's add a V-Ray dirt texture in here. And then also switch these two different colors. So now we have a very similar starting point like what we had with the dust. So let's also use this option here, consider same object only, so that we don't have this unwanted dust here at the contact area between the floor and the wheels. So now this here disappeared. And now we can dial in some basic settings to tweak our final result. So let's first use a radius of 100 in here and then also distribution of negative 10 to have a really strong effect. So now in the radius, let's just add a simple composite so that we can put a bunch of different maps together. And then as the base layer, let's just use the V-Ray bitmap, which we used earlier already and put this into the layer one in here. Then once we do this, you can see we have this interesting accumulation here of mud in some of the parts. Let's just go into the V-Ray dirt. Let's choose a different mode. Let's use, for example, here the ambient and inner occlusion mode. And now our whole car is quite evenly distributed with mud. I think that looks already quite cool. But now we don't want to have all the mud here evenly distributed around the whole vehicle. We want to have a lot of mud here nearby the floor area and then much less in these more higher areas of the car. So for this, we can use a V-Ray distance texture. Let's just add this into here. And now we would need to choose a object. In this case, it would be the floor. So let me just select here the floor in the scene. Let's open back our material editor again. So now the floor here is selected. And now let's add this V-Ray distance texture here as a new layer in our composite. And you can see that now we have a very strong effect because we need to flip these two different colors because we use it as a mask. Now you can see we have a distance of 10. So everything that's very close to the floor has a lot of mud. Let's just change here a different value. For example, value of 160. And you can see that we have a lot of mud down here, but not so much mud here at the top. And now we can also use a different blend mode. For example, let's choose here the multiply mode for the distance texture. And now we bring both of those here together. So that means we have this kind of nice, interesting breakup here of the mud in those parts down here. And then we have a little bit of mud the more higher we go here in the car. And then there's no mud here at the top anymore. So I think like this, the result looks actually quite cool. We can reorganize this graph here a little bit so that you can see how the whole thing here is built up. So for layer one, we use our V-Ray bitmap. Then we multiply here this distance texture on top of it. And that will give us this kind of result in here. So now as a final step, we can go back to our base material. We can bring back our dust shader so that both of those effects here layer on top of each other. And I think like this, it looks quite nice. We have a nice combination out of some dust and some thicker mud in here. And now instead of using this dummy shader, let's also bring back, of course, our original shader for this whole pickup truck. And then you can kind of see the finished results. So we have this kind of different materials here, which are all overlaid with this dust and mud effects. And the overall result can look quite convincing. And as you saw, it was very, very easy to achieve this kind of result. It basically just took a few minutes to layer these different shaders here together. 
and you can get a quite realistic result without having to deal with any kind of UVs or any kind of more time consuming techniques to get this kind of result in here. So if you watch this video until here, chances are that you also enjoy the content that I provide over on my Patreon, where you can download the whole scene files of all of my tutorials, and then also watch additional bonus lessons and a whole course on car rendering. So you can check this out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Until then, take care.